Now, the 37th Ordinary Session of the Assembly of the Heads of State and Government of the African Union may have come and gone, but the messages from the summit outlined the top priorities for Africa in 2024 and beyond. In addition to deliberating on the progress, challenges, and prospects of Africa's overall development, African leaders at the summit discussed key continental priorities ranging from peace and security to climate change, economic development, and indeed the continent's role in the wider global multilateral context. In President Tinubu's address to the AU summit, he declared that Nigeria was ready to host the African Central Bank expected to commence in 2028. The president also announced that ECOWAS is ready to dialogue with Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea towards the restoration of democracy. We must seize the, the change to create an era of trust and accord. We are doing everything possible, front door, back door diplomacy, to really bring peace and stability and democratic governance to West Africa. I'm joined now by Senior Expert Advisor to African Union, is Director of Pan-African Center for Policy Studies in Johannesburg, South Africa, Tago Agbazwe. Thank you for joining us on the program this evening. Thank you very much, um, Nifemi, for having me on board. Um, and um, greetings to our viewers. Absolutely. So the African Union's focus this year is on enhancing education and skills to meet the continent of vision and market needs. You were part of the Knowledge Marketplace exhibition on the sideline of that event. How wide do you think the gap currently is between the continent's efforts in this regard and the SDGs for education, where you consider indices like out-of-school children, the death of qualified teachers, and financing? Thank you, Nifemi. Well, actually, this is the first time that Africa has adopted education as um, its central development theme for the year. And yes, there has been a lot of progress um, across different countries in terms of um, improving the out-of-school rate and mobilization of resources for the education sector. But, you know, there's still gaps. There's still a lot of challenges. Africa has the Continental Education Strategy document from, um, that was shoot on from 2016 to 2026. Um, that particular document came into spotlight this year um, at this year's summit. Um, the, the central theme for this year's summit being how do we educate and skill Africa for the 21st century? So the idea is that it's no longer just about uh, you know, theory in classrooms, but it's about promoting your technical, vocational um, education training in, 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 in those areas and promoting your STEM kind of curriculum, which is around science and technology, um, digitalizing classrooms, um, and ensuring that we train our youth for the 21st century world of commerce, of innovation, of technology, and manufacturing. Absolutely. One of the very interesting features... Yes, go ahead, um, please. One of the very interesting features at the CS Summit was um, a digital exhibition that was put together um, by the African Union's um, Commission on Education, Science, Technology, and Innovation in, conjunct in conjunction with the... African Union's Development Agency, AUD and NEPAD for short, with some support from the German government and packaged together by Influence African Media Productions. Um, it provided a, a very phenomenal um, digital marketplace for socializing the theme of the year around education. It had over 25 partners that provided content in terms of their strategies, their efforts, their visions around uh, promoting um, and creating the change that we want to see um, in the education sector um, starting from this year. So, you know, we also saw the assembly reflect on the achievements and gaps, you know, marked during the first decade of implementing the union's 50-year uh, continental developmental blueprint, what we know as the Agenda 2063. But I haven't followed this closely for years. How effective would you say these high conversations have been 
you know, in the past years vis-a-vis -vis what we have achieved? Are we really working the talk? Well, you know, the thing is that, you know what, sometimes these things are easier said than done. There has, we can't deny it, there has been uh, phenomenal progress in the continent in the past 25, uh, in the past, say, 10 to 20 years, um, you know, but the reality remains that we still have a long way to go in terms of um, creating a sustainable Africa, a competitive Africa, an Africa where private sector is at its peak, it's optimized, there's capacity, um, there's opportunities, there's a level playing field. Um, one of the areas that, you know, um, where we, we, we need to see further development, I guess, is around governance, you know, adherence to public finance management systems, ensuring the tenets of discipline, transparency, accountability, fairness to all stakeholders, to the citizenry, you know. Um, we have seen that, and, and uh, we have seen a lot of issues around um, our institutions. Our institutions on the continent require strengthening. They're weakening, actually. They're regressing. And this is an area of concern uh, for development, um, you know, for national citizens and development partners. Um, we need to strengthen our institutions on the continent. Institutions that have to do with protecting our democracy, um, um, our democracy and our democratic institutions and ideals. Those institutions that are involved in ensuring public finance management um, to avoid fruitless and um, wasteful expenditure and to ensure that um, budget allocations that are made for development uh, for developmental purposes actually get to the beneficiaries, that and those then, projects mm. actually happen and not end up in, um, in accounts, in private accounts of ministers and so on. This is not, this is a general this is a general problem at the, at the moment, you know, um, and in Nigeria, some of these issues have been highlighted in terms of like a lot of press. Um, we saw a lot of press and criticism around what happened in the humanitarian ministry with funds um, appearing in ministers' accounts and all that drama, mm -hmm. you know. Um, right now, we could do with less of those kind of attention because these kind of, um, if I would say drama, um, these type of soap operas happening and playing out um, within our leadership, actually, um, they decrease the level of confidence that the public has um, in government's ability to solve its um, development um, challenges. I agree Thank with you. you that we need a working system and the institutions to make this work. It's beyond just you know, promises like we've heard over the years from African leaders. But President Tinubu's outing in Addis Ababa is already getting some boss uh, back at home. Some of his aides say that he probably gave one of the most inspiring speeches. I don't know if you agree with that position. Uh, they say that he spoke from his heart to matters on the continent. But let's quickly explore some of the highlights from his speech. It did say that Africa's success in addressing its challenges hinges on the firmness of its resolution. Um, yes. What do you think makes resolutions firm? You know, is it the determination expressed by leaders at meetings like these, or their competence at their jobs back at home? Well, to be honest with you, um, um, you know, to be honest with you, um, if any, you know, first of all, we need to talk the talk. And Africa, to be honest with you, was very excited and happy to hear someone in the personality of a president of Nigeria say that we are ready to have a common monetary policy and a single currency in Africa. I think that's a massive, massive, massive one. And I think the president in this regard, President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinibu, needs to be heralded for that boldness. He needs to be supported in that in, in this regard, and I'm expecting that um, the different institutions in Nigeria, including the budgetary office and the National Assembly, will make the necessary processes and structures to ensure that Nigeria can indeed host such an institution as um, the African Central Bank by 2028. I think um, that's phenomenal from the president and should be her heralded. We have to, the reality is that we've got our African free trade continental area 
Um, also building from the Abuja Treaty, there's been a number of uh, processes in terms of um, integrating the continent. One of those is the Africa Free Trade Continental Area, Agree uh, Free Trade Con Continental Area Agreement, which technically removes, um, enables African countries to remove uh, all sorts of barriers and restrictions, both financial and non-financial in nature, um, to ensuring that Africa technically becomes one country, you know, where we're relying on the capacity within our continent to solve our development imperatives. It's hard to tell if um, 